You can skip this section if you looked at video one in this series. Otherwise, I'll go over what we're looking at. And this is the different types of behavior modes that we're interested in modeling. And there's exponential growth, exponential decline, goal seeking, S-shaped or logistics growth, overshoot and collapse, and oscillation. And the argument is that these behavior modes will show up in the actual data. And it may not be identical. It may be a combination of these different behavior modes that you're observing in your data. And when we're modeling, we want to know what type of structure will generate the different behavior modes. And this series of videos is going to show you what structure or what very simple structure will generate the different behavior modes. So this is a graph of exponential decline. Exponential decline simply means that the outflow rate is going to be proportional to the stock. And so that there's a connection or a first order control between the stock and the outflow rate. And in this case, you can see that it's just declining and it's declining at a rate that's sort of less and less. And the reason it's less and less is because the stock is becoming smaller and smaller. Examples of exponential decline in the real world would be radioactive decay and that there's a half-life and it, it's gradually decaying but there's less and less decaying. Uh, another example would be depreciation of assets, uh, oil reserves being depleted, or perhaps the body metabolizing a drug that's been ingested would be examples of exponential decline. And I'm just going to run through one example and that will be next. So I've got Stella opened, and the first thing I'm going to do is double click, and I'm going to run it from zero to day 30. And it's going to be in days. I know that I'm going to use an example of radon. So I know radon declines, or the decay rate, or the half-life, is 3.8 days. So this will be simulating in days. Now I've got that selected. Everything else is good. I'm going, to click, I'm going to go up and click on my stock and bring it down, make it a little bit larger. And this is going to be radon. And it's actually radon 222. Make this a little larger by grabbing and holding. I want to put this in the middle, so I'm just going to drag it over and so that I have all this space to work. And then I like my variable names to be in the middle of my stocks. I'm going to go up and capture this flow and click on it once. I'm going to hold down right on top of radon and drag it to the right. And this is going to be the decay. I could call it radon decay. It doesn't really matter. I need one more. I'm going to go up to my converter, converter variable, and this will be the average half-life. There I go. And I'm going to click. And I've gone up and selected my connector. And my average half-life is going to go to the decay. And my stock is going to go to the decay. And now I can start putting values in. I'm going to double-click on the average half-life. And I know it's 3.8 days. The unit's going to be days. And let's start out. I'll go to my stock. I'm going to double-click on my stock. I'm going to make it 100. And it's going to be grams. I'm going to have 100 grams of radon. That are... And now I'm going to double click on the decay, this rate here. And it's going to be the radon, the stock, divided by the average half-life. And the units are going to be in grams per day. I'm going to go up and grab a graph and throw a graph in here. Make it a little bit bigger. And I'll double click on my graph. I'm going to um, click on this plus sign, and I have all the variables that I can select to put in the graph. I'm going to pick the stock and tell it OK, and go up and make it a comparative graph. And when I make it a comparative graph, it's automatically going to put the variable name in here. I can only have one variable when I'm doing a comparative graph. I would like to see numbers on these things. I'm going to go down and select numbers with the marker type. I'm going to go to this wrench here and click on this. And I don't like my X labels being at 7.5 days. Not a fan. I'm going to go up and make it an even number. I think uh, that'll be fine every six days. 
and I'll make my Y labels. I'll throw those in there and now I'm ready to run this simulation. And I'm going to simulate and you can see how this is declining just like the example for the exponential decline. Again, it's called exponential decline because the outflow is a function of the stock. So it could be proportional. It's going to be the same. We're always dividing by 3.8 days, which is another way of saying proportional. What I can always do is take the reciprocal of 3.85 days, turn this into a fraction basically, right? And I would do that by dividing the 3.8 days into one. And you can imagine I'm dividing there, so I have to go up to my decay rate and change how I have that formulation. Because this is a fraction, then this would no longer be division, it would be multiplication. So I'm gonna double click, let's just do this. And I'd done it ahead of time, and I know that it's um, it'd be 1 divided by 3.8, which is approximately 0.26. And then I'm going to go into the decay, and now it's no longer going to be division. It's going to be multiplication. I do have to change the units. I failed on that. So if I click on the white space, what's going to happen is I get one unit warning. And I, it's going to tell me the unit warning is in the decay. They always have to be right. The decay is going to be whatever's in the stock per time. So this has to be grams per day. So this is where my problem really is. And it's no longer um, just days. It's dimensionless per day or fraction per day, really, right? And average half-life. I think I can leave it as average even though it's a fraction now. So the question is, if I've done this right, if I simulate this in a comparative graph, it should be identical. Let me run that. And yeah, maybe I could go out a different decimal point, but for practical purposes, this is identical. So I am in good shape. So you can see how the reciprocal and I would change. And, and most of the math that you're gonna be doing with this type of stuff is gonna be simply addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication or division so I think that's it for now we've done everything here and this is how you generate exponential decay and one other point again I'm just repeating myself is that it's exponential decay because it it's a function of the stock so the decay rate here is a function of the stock or proportional to the stock so that's it. Thanks. See you in the next video.